not what I was expecting. First run in the Hock and Bondi 8s. Very interesting. I'll give you my first impressions at the end of this run, but not what I was expecting. Guys, summer has arrived early and I'm struggling a bit to acclimatize to this sudden burst of heat and humidity. Just taking it nice and steady and lots of drink stops, stopping every four or five K for a drink. Oh, but it is humid. Can't bear to think what summer's gonna be like in a couple of months if it's like this already. Whew. Probably showing my age here, but every time I run past this light, it reminds me of the robot out of the TV show Lost in Space back in the oh, 1970s or 1980s. Remember that robot? If you do, in the comments down below, that TV show Lost in Space. What was it? Warning! 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 Every time it gets me. Better. Really having trouble keeping the heart rate low. I'm really struggling in this heat. It took a longer break then than normal, and I'm just going to plod home now. The last 3k. Very, very hot. Seventeen point one k, five ten per kilometer average, one hundred and thirty beats per minute. Running in the Hoka Bondi Eights for the very first time. Nice and warm out there today, guys, and I did suffer a little bit. Hoka's marketing suggests that the Bondi Eight is their number one ultra cushion shoe. It features a higher bed of soft cushion designed to provide a forgiving impact and ride. I'm sorry guys, but I just didn't feel that ultra cushion out there on that run. In fact, I found the Bondi 8s to be a little bit on the firm side. Mind you, not as firm as the Clifton 4s and 5s that I did have some time ago, which were my last venture into the Hoka road running shoes. I've seen a lot of comments on Strava and on Instagram, also a lot of reviews here on YouTube, raving about the Bondi 8s and how cushioned they are. But for me, guys, it just didn't scream ultra cushion. Maybe I've been spoilt a little bit by running in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version 2s. This shoe is ultra, ultra cushion. As you can see, have a look at that, guys, how soft that midsole is. I just don't see it in the Hoka. I just don't see it. It's just not ultra cushion. I don't think so. Don't get me wrong, the Bondi 8s were a comfortable ride, but I just didn't get that squishy, bouncy, cushiony feel that I got when I was running in the New Balance Rebels version 2s. Now I'm a bit of a sucker because I have fallen for the Hoka marketing. When I was looking to update my shoe rotation, I had the Tarawera 100K in the back of my mind and preparing for that event. I wanted to find some shoes that were cushiony, plush, that would look after the legs preparing for a 100 kilometer trail race. And the marketing suggested that this was the way to go in the Hoka range for road running. I expected that bouncy, squishy ride, and it just wasn't happening on that first run. Now, admittedly, 
I've only done 17 kilometers and maybe this midsole will soften up over time but it's just left me feeling a little bit disappointed with this shoe after the first run. Now another thing that I have found disappointing with the Bondi 8s is the upper. Sure it's an engineered mesh upper but on that first run really hot. It was a hot day and I didn't find the upper breathable. My feet were starting to roast a little bit inside there so it's going to really dictate how I'm going to use this shoe moving forward and we're coming into summer here in Brisbane. I don't think that I can run in this shoe in the heat of the day. I think my feet are just going to get too cooked. So this shoe is going to be either a early morning or a late afternoon run when the conditions are just a little bit cooler. Now on that run I wore the Stegen socks, they're nice and thin but even so my feet still did get really hot. Despite those two negatives I actually didn't mind the ride in this shoe. Yeah, it was a little bit firmer than what I was expecting, but I actually felt quite comfortable in the run. It's not like the Clifton 4s and 5s that I had. You felt like you had two Tonka trucks on your feet. But with the Bondi 8, I felt comfortable and smooth, and I didn't feel like I had to push at any stage to maintain a consistent gait or consistent pace. Where is the Bondi 8 going to fit in my shoe rotation? I think it's gonna have a place. If this midsole softens up, as I get some more miles into it, fantastic. If it doesn't, I'm not going to be too concerned because I am adding a few shoes to my shoe rotation now that have got that really soft, spongy, bouncy midsole. So I don't see it as a bad thing having a shoe in my rotation which sits a little bit in the firm side. It's nice to have a variety of shoes in your rotation. The only drawback will be that I probably can't use this in the heat of the day through summer. So I'm going to have to be very selective uh, at what times of the day I do run in the Hoka Bondi 8. Well, there you go guys that was my first impression in the shoe what's this space because i'm going to be interested to see after maybe 50 to 100 kilometers what's that 30 to 60 mile even up to 150 to 200 kilometers just to see if this midsole will soften up a little bit the outsole hoke has always been such a durable shoe for me i haven't had any issues with the Hoka range that I've had in the past with durability. I'm still going to get a lot of miles in this shoe. Guys, have you got the Hoka Bondi 8? And if so, let me know in the comments what you thought of the shoe. Did you find it a little bit firm to begin with and did it soften up that midsole as you put some more miles in? Be really interested to know. That's it for this video, guys. My first impression on the Hoka Bondi 8. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.